Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not saying good because right now it is not a good morning for Breonna Taylor and the supporters of Breonna Taylor and her family. I'm attorney Ben Crump, along with attorney Lanita Baker, attorney Sam Aguiar, my law partner, attorney Chris O'Neill. We have the honor of representing and fighting for respect, dignity, and justice for Breonna Taylor and her family. We have present with us her mother, yes. Tamika Palmer, yes. her sister, Janiah, mm -hmm. her aunt, Bianca Austin. Mm -hmm. We also have who I call the queen of the movement for Brianna, Tamika Mallory, and Until Freedom. Yes. We also have the Brianna Square activists who are present with us today. And Attorney Baker and Aguiar and I know without a shadow of a doubt, without the activist community saying her name, there is no way we would have gotten this far with all over the world people saying Brianna Taylor's name. Say her name. Also, we are joined by a man who did an incredible thing this morning. Jacob Blake Jr. father, Jacob Blake Sr. traveled from Kenosha, Wisconsin to be here with Tamika Palmer, Brianna's mother. And so we also have state representative Charles and uh, State Representative Charles Booker and State Representative Attica, who are present, Attica Scott, who are present with us today. Fresh out of jail for standing for Breonna Taylor. Now that's the transformation of leadership we need in America as we head into this November 2nd election that matters so much for so many reasons. But for this moment in particular, this moment matters for Breonna Taylor. So if you were marching for Breonna Taylor, if you were exercising your First Amendment rights for Breonna Taylor, if you were protesting for Breonna Taylor, if you signed a petition for Breonna Taylor, we need you to go sign a ballot yes. and vote That's on right. November 2nd yes. for Breonna Taylor. Oh, November 3rd. November 3rd. Right. I'm thinking early voting. That's right. Early vote. Early vote. Early vote. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, you know, obviously, Tamika Palmer and her entire family, her father, is here from Michigan. Mm, mm. Yeah, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Brianna's Taylor entire family is heartbroken, yeah. devastated, yeah. and outraged, yeah. and confused, mm. and bewildered, mm -hmm. just like all of us, as to what did Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron present to the grand jury. Mm. Did he present any evidence mm. on Breonna Taylor's behalf? Mm -hmm. Or did he make a unilateral decision mm. to put his thumb on the scales of justice to help try to exonerate mm. and justify the killing of Breonna Taylor by these police officers and in doing so, Make sure that Breonna Taylor's family never got their day in court, never got their chance for due process, and in essence, denied them justice. That's why we are standing here today united in solidarity 
declaring and demanding that he release the transcripts of the grand jury proceeding so we can know if there was anybody giving a voice to Breonna Taylor. Because with these results from this grand jury, Tamika Mallory, you know, wanton endangerment wow. for the white neighbor's apartment My that God. lived next to her, but no wanton endangerment for the bullet tray that went into the apartment of the black neighbors above her apartment, and no wanton endangerment for the bullets that went murder charges for the bullets mm. that mutilated Breonna Taylor's mm. body. Mm. Mr. Blake, it underscores what we have been saying all along. There seems to be two justice systems in America, mm -hmm. one for black America and one for white America. And this has been emphasized by this grand jury proceeding into the killing of Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. You know, Sam Aguiar, it, it's kind of ironic when you think about the message that is being sent from this grand jury ruling. Mm. It's like they charged the police for missing shooting bullets into black bodies, but not charging the police for shooting bullets into black bodies. Where that happen at? Yeah. In Kentucky, in Louisville, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And we question what evidence did Kentucky Attorney General sin to the grand jury. Yes, Did he tell them about the probable cause affidavit that had a lie on that affidavit, which was the basis yes. for which the judge signed this no no warrant in the mm -hmm. first place yes, to allow them to be at Brianna's apartment and bust open her door? Yes, because if he didn't send that, my son, well, what did he argue on Brianna's behalf? What did he argue? Tell them what did he argue? Did he tell them about the 12 neighbors that Sam Aguilar's office interviewed and recorded that lived in close proximity of Brianna's apartment that all said they did not hear the police knock and announce their presence? Mm -hmm. Did he let them testify before the grand jury? Did he allow the one neighbor who they keep proclaiming that heard the police knock and announce mm, yeah, that testify before mm. the grand jury? Even though, Tamika, as I understand on two previous occasions, mm. he declared that he did not hear the police knock wow. and announce. Mm, wow. So is this the only person out of her apartment complex did he allow to testify before the grand jury? That doesn't seem fair. Mm. That doesn't seem like you're fighting for Brianna. Mm. That doesn't seem for evidence for justice for Brianna. He let the cops who shot over 30 rounds of bullets in Brianna's apartment, one from outside the apartment shooting recklessly and blindly, and the others who shot bullets into her body, did he allow them to testify before the grand jury? Did he allow Brianna's boyfriend, Kenny Walker, to testify before the grand jury? Did he talk about them sending the ambulance away?
before they executed this no not warrant, violating their own policies and procedures, knowing that these no not warrants are dangerous, and it was foreseeable that somebody could be injured, a citizen or a police or a third party innocent bystander like Breonna Taylor, who lived in that apartment, who had every right to legally be in that apartment, who did not have a gun, was only clothed in her night clothes, mm. and had every right to live and breathe in her apartment. Mm. Did he present that to the grand jury? Well, if he didn't present these things to the grand jury, what kind of sham grand jury proceeding was this? Yeah. 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 Kangaroo court. It follows a pattern. It follows a pattern, Bianca, of the blatant disrespect and marginalization of black people, mm. but especially yes. black right. women right. in America right. who have been killed by police. Because part of Brianna's legacy will always be, just like Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown raised America's consciousness level and attention to Black Lives Matter, Brianna's legacy will be that black Women, life matters too. So when we think about this grand jury proceeding, if you want us to accept the results, then release the transcript. That's right. That's right. Release the transcript so we can have transparency. And if you did everything that you could do on Brianna's behalf, you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever, Daniel Cameron, to releasing the transcript so that we can see you fought for all of Kentucky citizens, especially including Tamika Palmer's daughter, mm. Brianna Taylor. Mm. Release the transcript. Release the transcript. Release the transcript. Release the transcript. Release the transcripts. 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 Y'all, I don't know if Daniel Cameron can hear us. Let's say it from the heart. So not only Daniel Cameron can hear us, but Breonna Taylor can hear us from heaven. What we want Daniel Cameron, the Kentucky Attorney General, to do. On three. One, two, three. Release the transcripts! At this time, you know, uh, one of the greatest lawyers, one of the greatest secrets in Louisville, Kentucky, my co-counsel, uh, my sister, my co-warrior, Lanita Baker, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, Brianna, people, I'm sorry, Tamika, people who are in the fraternity that you're in from all over America, a fraternity that no parent wants to be in, but far too many black mothers and fathers are part of, have sent their pledge of support to stand with you. All of them couldn't come like Mr. Jacob Blake Sr., but all of them sent their support. I, when the announcement came out, Falonis Floyd and Rodney Floyd and Bridget Floyd, the brothers and sisters from George mm. Floyd, who was killed in Minneapolis, Minnesota, were the first ones to pledge their support. And then right after that, House of Representatives, uh, Lucy McBath, who fathered mm. Jordan Davis, yeah. our son was killed for playing loud music. Yeah. 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 We got a call from Dr. Tiffany Crutcher, the twin sister of Terrence Crutcher, who was killed 
in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was hands up. Right. Don't shoot on video, right. Tamika. We got a call from Gwen Carr, Eric Gardner's mother yeah. from Staten Island, New York. We got a call from Tamir Rice's mother, yeah. Tamaria Rice. We got a call from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Philando Castile's yeah. mother. Oh my God. We got a call from Stefan Clark's brother, Stefante and grandmother, who was killed in Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. We got notified that Sandra Bland's mother is pledging her support mm. to be with you. We got notified that Ezell Ford, mm -hmm. our brother who was having a mental health crisis mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, California, is pledging his support. Dijon Kenzie, who was shot 15 times two weeks ago in the back by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. I left Los Angeles coming here. His aunt who raised him literally weak for you, even though she had just lost her nephew who she raised as her own son. Uh, Joseph Richardson's mother, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So we are here declaring in Breonna Taylor's name, enough mm. is enough, America. Yeah. Enough yeah. is enough, yeah. America. Yeah. Enough yeah. is yeah. enough, yeah. America. Yeah. Enough is enough, America. 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 Please join me in welcoming a great champion of justice, my co-counsel from the law firm of Sam Aguiar, who's also present with us here and deserves acknowledgement. A great great lawyer. We give you attorney Lanita Baker. I know attorney Crump has demanded that we release the transcript and I echo that demand. Amen. And we don't want to hear that you can't release the transcript because you released the recording of Kenny Walker's uh, mm. Tell it. Grand, Walker, uh, grand jury proceedings. Mm. So you can release the recordings and we demand that you release the recordings. But not only do we want the recordings and the transcript, what we also want is for you to quit dodging the questions, Daniel mm. Cameron. Mm. Mm. You were asked at the press conference, did you make a recommendation? You refused to answer. Mm. Answer the question. Mm. Right. Answer the question. And I've asked you several times, did you even present any charges regarding Breonna Taylor to the grand jury? Mm. I don't want to hear that the grand jury determined this if it's your office that unilaterally determined not to charge any officers with the death of Breonna Taylor. You can't pawn this off the grand jury on the grand jury if your office made that decision. And we, the voters, deserve the right to know who is it that we need to say got it wrong. Tell it. Did the grand jury get it wrong on uh, in using the defense of justification? Or did your office get it wrong? Mm -hmm. Because what we know in Kentucky, and what many of you may not know, is I practiced criminal law for 13 years in this Commonwealth on, of them, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I did it as a prosecutor and a defense attorney. Right. So I know the law of self-defense in Kentucky. That's right. And I know that you don't have the right to use the defense of self-defense when you injure or kill an innocent third party. Yes, mm. And what we know from Sergeant Mattingly's own testimony to the Public Integrity Unit is that he saw that Breonna Taylor was unarmed. Yes. Yes. His own testimony, he right. saw Breonna Taylor was unarmed. And then you made a lot of it, you put a lot of attention on the bullet, that the, the fatal, the fatal shot to Breonna Taylor being made by Miles Cosgrove. If he wasn't able to see Breonna Taylor, to also see that she was unarmed, then he also was firing just as recklessly as Brett Matt Hankinson, and he deserves to be here charged with one murder of Breonna Taylor. If he didn't see her, he didn't have target acquisition, he deserves to be charged right now. So don't tell us that the grand jury made this determination if it was truly your determination. Answer that question head on. 
Was it your office's decision or was it the grand jury's decision? Release the transcript. Mm. Mm. Release the transcript. Release the transcript. And I know we have a lot going on, and I've been angry. I have been angry, and I'm angry because, as I said, I've been, I've worked in this system. I worked as a prosecutor who fought so hard to make sure I was administering justice regardless of who the victim was, regardless of who the perpetrator was. And that's the only way that the system's going to work is to have prosecutors, Daniel Cameron, that work for us. And Daniel Cameron, I do. I, I took offense to you not being fully up front with mm. Tamika Palmer when we met mm. with you. Mm. Right. Mm. Should have never mm. gone there. Should have never I take there. true offense to that. And you have to know your legal obligations as a prosecutor is to inform the family, mm. to talk to the family, to keep them uh, informed on what's going on. Mm -hmm. You failed to do that, and you failed to be fully honest with her when we met with you while the grand jury report was being relayed to the public. So you told us we would know in advance. We learned at the same time that America learned. That's unacceptable. That's right. 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 And we have a right to be angry. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I do want to talk to, to those of us who have been on the ground. Mm -hmm. We can't let the anger consume us because we still got consumed by anger. And so I've been praying, I've been praying this morning to not let the anger that's been coming down today because I'm staying down here. Mm -hmm. Because I want LMPD majors who say that we're the ones out here washing cars yeah. or checking you out at Walmart. Yeah. No, we're not. We're lawyers. Right. We're business people. Mm -hmm. we're, we're city employees just like you. And guess what? Even if I was washing your car, right. it doesn't matter. I have a right to use my voice. Right. Two years ago, I was checking people in and out of a hotel, too, while also practicing as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When I was there, I was the same person that I am practice, right. practicing mm -hmm. law. Right. So, LMPD, you have to change the mentality of who you're fighting. You're not going to have this city of Louisville believe that Attica Scott, Shamika Parrish, Rhonda Mathis, and those who were with them was mm. burning down a library. Right. Stop right. the lies. Right. So we can't move right. forward with the lies. Yes. We can't move forward with the lies. We know that we need healing. We know that this city needs healing. And we're willing to do our part. But you have to do your part. And until you start doing your part, we won't heal. That's right. We're here. Yeah. We're here when you're ready to listen to us, yes. to come down. And I challenge those of you who are off today, you don't have to come down and protest, but I challenge you to come down here and listen to the people who are protesting. Right. Exactly. Those of you who are elected officers, come down here during the day. Right. Listen to the protesters. Right. Business people who have sent me inboxes, we support you. Support us by coming down here, showing them that we are not, we are not just car washers checking people out. That's right. There's enemy. so many more people down here. And quit skewing, media quit skewing mm -hmm. the way that people are protesting. You know the majority of the people down here are non-balanced. Mm -hmm. You've been down here for 120 days. Mm -hmm. You know it. Talk quit making it seem balanced. They're not. Mm -hmm. That's why we're over Yes, shout out to the Bible 2 live streamers because that is how we're learning the truth. That is how we're learning the truth. Regular media, take a cue. Film it all. Don't slant it. Tell the truth. LMPD, tell the whole truth. Everybody, tell the whole truth, including you, Daniel Cameron. Did you make the decision or did the grand jury make the decision? My co warrior. Right. Not co counselor, co warrior. <laughs> Lanita Baker. Yeah. Let me repeat that. Maybe they didn't hear me. That's, right. That's why I call her my co warrior. Right. Not right. co counselor, right. co warrior. Right. That's right. And Attorney Aguiar, the secret's out the bag now. Yeah. Yeah. The secret is out the bag. What a great well-kept secret Kentucky has an yeah. attorney, Lanita Baker. And yeah. it, boy, I tell you, it's a wake-up call to these elected officials mm -hmm. because she represents the most talented, 
most articulate, most intellectual representative of this city that we have to offer. Yeah. And so if you don't do your job, it's going to be Come people like Tamika, I'm sorry, like Lanita Baker or others mm -hmm. who are going to take your seat. Yeah. Before we bring this next champion of justice up, we want to have a statement from the family. You know, Sam and Trader Truth for 191 days, people all across America People elected in Washington, like Senator Kamala Harris, people in the National Basketball Association mm -hmm. and the Women's National mm -hmm. Basketball Association, NFL players, uh, celebrities right. who uh, we all called to the protest. Uh, Y'all remember they came mm -hmm. to the Capitol, mm -hmm. like Jada Pinkett yeah. Smith and Common. Common yeah and so many others, but Rhapsody, Rhapsody so many others, yeah. but more importantly, just regular folk, black, white, Hispanic, native, all over the world have been saying, say her name. Yes. And how insulting was it on the indictment that Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron didn't mention her name one time. So, Tamika Palmer, before we bring your sister up to speak, I want you all to do me a favor. Since he didn't say it in the indictment, say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Now, next, we will hear from the sister of Tamika Palmer, the aunt of Breonna Taylor, Bianca Austin, who I will tell you, before for Taylor, she was like the lawyer on the front line leading the protest. So it is aptly appropriate for Bianca to come and make a statement on behalf of the family. So I will ask for the charity of your undivided attention while she read a message from the family and especially from the heart of Brianna's mother, Tamika Palmer. Please, Miss Austin. I'm represent my niece in her EMT jacket. Um, I chose this just to have her be a part of us today. Um, also, I just want to shout out to our family. Um, it's been a long six months, um, and it's been a, a wild roller coaster. Not only have we been out here fighting for justice for Brianna, but we are continuing to lose our family members uh, to cancer, to COVID, to being murdered. And so um, my message is to you is just cry your tears, lift your head up, and keep stepping. Um, I hear you, Bianca. And most of you know this has been emotionally, mentally, and physically draining for my sister. So I'm going to do the honor and read her thoughts um, after Daniel Cameron's um, decision. And I quote, I never had faith in Daniel Cameron to begin with. Amen. I knew he was too inexperienced to deal with a job of this caliber. Mm. I knew he had already chosen to be on the wrong side of the law. Mm. The moment he wanted to, the grand jury to make the decision, what I had hoped is that he knew he had the power to do the right thing, mm -hmm. that he had the power 
start the healing of this city, that he had the power to help men over 400 years of oppression. Hmm. What he helped me realize is that it will always be us against them, yeah. that we are never safe when it comes to them. Mm. Maddenly, in an email called us animals and thugs, it's clear that that is the way that they will always see us. I, will reassure, I was reassured Wednesday of why I have no faith in the legal system, in the police, in the law that are not made to protect us black and brown people. But when I speak on it, I'm considered an angry black woman. Mm. But know this, I am an angry black yeah. woman. Hey. I am not angry for the reasons that you would like me to be. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But turn. angry because our black women keep dying at the hands of police black officers. Mm. Black men. And, and black men. Mm. Okay. Angry because our children are dying at the hands of police officers. Mm -hmm. And I'm angry because this nation is learning that our black women dying at the hands of police officers, and this is not okay. Mm. Not you can take the dog out of the fight, but will stand into fight. Mm. Yeah. I knew Cameron would never do his job, mm. but what I do know is that him and countless others will go to bed sleeping with Brianna's face, still hearing her say her name. Yeah. Right. Cameron alone didn't fail her. But it ended with the lack of investigation failed her. Mm. The officer who told a lie to a search warrant failed her. Mm. The judge who signed the search warrant failed her. The terrorist who broke down her door oh. failed her. Mm. The system as has failed her. You didn't just rob me of my and my family. You robbed the world of a queen. Mm. A queen willing to do a job that most of us could never stomach to do. A queen willing to build up anyone around her. A queen who was starting to pave her path. Mm -hmm. I hope you never have to know the pain of knowing your child is in need and help and you're not able to give them. Mm. I hope you never hear the sounds of seeing someone cry and beg for your child to get help and she never receives help. Those cries was ignored. I hope you never know the pain 191 in a row mm. to make a yeah, So sorry. sorry you got to go through this. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. It's unacceptable. Yeah. But your family got your back. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're not going nowhere. We got your back. Right? Until freedom has your back. Right. Right. Lanita has your yeah. back. Right. Ben has your yeah. back. Yeah. Your daddy has your back. Right. And guess what? On these grounds, right. has your back. That's right. Stop on these grounds. That's right. Flush out. Yeah. Flush out. Sam got her back. Oh, you got her back. That's right. And God definitely. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. And thank you for reading. Thank you for reading the words from a mother's heart, a heart that is broken. Thank you, Bianca. That was heartfelt. Every mother around the world could feel Tamika's pain. We just take a moment for a second yeah. to reflect on what we just heard. Yeah. I, I really mean it because I... I when Lanita and Sam called me, you know, black women are often disrespected. <laughs> Calling people in the media, and we know it's the call celeb now. Breonna Taylor, this black woman who was killed by the police. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did not return my calls. Mm -hmm as we were begging to give attention to Breonna Taylor. But I got to tell you, a lot of people did answer the call. Yeah. And, and I won't go through the list, but one young woman who answered the call, I had known she was a champion for justice, five days fighting for Trayvon Martin, and so many other families that have been that claim the lives of their 
loved ones. And not only did she answer the bell, she said, Crump, we are not going to leave this until we get charges. And it was deep to me, Lanita, and you remember, we then started going on her social media uh, and doing the Instagram lives just to try to bring awareness to Breonna Taylor's name. And, and I remember others allowing us to use their platform, and I don't want to take anything away from Ricky Smiley and Charlemagne and Tesla Figaro and Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, Lionel Gomez TV show, but this young lady almost every day went on social media and followed Janiah's lead. Because remember, Tamika, Janiah every day went on social media and said, my sister, Breonna Taylor, life mattered when nobody else was listening. But then this young lady got involved and had her song sound on her social media every day. And we strategized every day. And then she said, you know what, Crump? Every day, because if Tamika Palmer can't sleep in peace, neither can we. And we're going to come and be in solidarity together, demanding justice for Breonna Taylor. And for, I think now, over four months, you all have That's been cool. here, living here, living here this whole time. Yeah. And that's why I call her the queen of the movement for justice for Breonna Taylor. My sister, my warrior, my freedom fighter, Tamika Mallory. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. And if there ain't going to be no justice, there ain't, ain't going to be, be no peace. peace. You know, I want to read something to you all that I learned of just the day after um, Daniel Cameron's decision. It says, it is a great honor to receive the endorsement of the bipartisan Kentucky Fraternal Order of Police. To the men and women in blue, I pledge to be your advocate mm. and your voice every day. Mm. When I first got into the public safety challenge of our lifetime, the drug crisis, this epidemic, I am humbled to have this endorsement, and as Chief Law Enforcement Officer in Kentucky, I will work every day to make our community safer and our families and cities, citizens more secure. Half of that, oh, that statement is from Daniel Cameron when he received the endorsement of the FOP, the most racist organizations that exist in America. I got time today. Okay. <laughs> and half of that statement was a lie. Mm. Daniel Cameron is not here to protect citizens and to make the state of Kentucky safer. Say that. But he was honest about one part, and that is that he is an advocate for police well. and that he was going to be their voice mm. and to do whatever is necessary to protect them. Whatever. And so we learned that he stood, he's a man of his word as it relates to his relationship to police. Mm -hmm. He protected the police. And it did not matter to him one bit that those same officers could have ran in his mama, his black mama's well, house, mm -hmm. and shot her to death. Mm -hmm. He's more committed to the white supremacy well, that he is upholding. Mm -hmm. He mentioned at the press conference, which I thought was quite interesting that he's a black man and as I laid and cried and hurt for Tamika Palmer for Kenny Walker and for Janine as I laid there and I thought about him saying he's a black man I thought about the ships that went into Fort Monroe and Jamestown with our people on them over 400 years ago. 
and how there were also black men on those ships that were responsible for bringing our people over here. Mm. Daniel Cameron is no different than the sellout Negroes wow. that sold our people into slavery and helped white men to capture our people, to abuse them and to traffic them while our women were raped, while our men were raped by savages. That is who you are, Daniel Cameron. You are a coward, you are a sellout, and you were used by the system to harm your own mama, your own black mama. We have no respect for you, no respect for your black skin, because all of our skin folk ain't our kin folk, and you do not belong to black people at all. We learned that on the same exact day that this announcement came out, it was the day that in September of, I forget the year, 1955, 65, no, 1955, which was 65 years ago, Emmett Till was also killed again, denied justice, because the two white officers responsible for, the two white men, excuse me, responsible for killing him were let free. Mm. That is stupid, <laughs> or that he is very, very, very clear about history well, and made a decision yes, to wait six months come and come forward with this announcement this garbage that we received right. on the exact same day right. that Emmett Till's family received the same wicked this system is. The whole damn thing. Attorney Sam Aguiar, and I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I got to say it. Y'all know I, do, I push the envelope too far all the time. That's all right. Attorney <laughs> Sam Aguiar said he spoke to the attorney general's office and told them, do not have Tamika Palmer come all the way to Frankfurt, which is an hour drive away, to hear bad news and have to drive back. Do not do that to her. You can call on the telephone for bad news. And that wicked man yeah. called for her to come there anyway and had this black mama to have to drive home with her sister and her family after hearing that they didn't even mention her daughter's name in the damn indictment process in this grand jury hearing. How dare you? What kind of man are you? How dare you? And we are not going home. We will make sure that this city is as uncomfortable as it can be. And we, intend, and we intend to travel across the state of Kentucky and make sure that in every corner of this state, they know who you are, Daniel Cameron, and who is upholding the system of white supremacy that continues to oppress our people. The last thing we will say is Mayor Fisher, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Do not think for one moment that you're going to hide behind a settlement or hide behind reform that we are happy to see that you actually support it, but it must be implemented and we have to make sure that that work is done. But the main thing that matters at this point you can have the National Guard, the mm. Army, the white militia, mm. the whoever you want to have here, LMPD, whoever you want to have. Anybody, turn them loose. Tell them, turn them loose. But until you fire those cops, until your investigation returns the results that the police officers who murdered they said they were mad at me for using the language murder. On, I man. said what I said. They murdered Breonna Taylor. And until those officers are fired from this department, I promise you, I promise you, we will continue to make these streets hot. Now, and today at 5 o'clock, just for anybody who's wondering when to meet us, we're going to be outside. We're going to be outside. 
The last thing I want to tell you all is that I, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a visitor, so I, I observe. And our team, we, we, we don't live here permanently, but we temporarily live here. Mm -hmm. And we observe a lot. So last night as we broke curfew, because that's what we do, that's what and we prepared for whatever that means, we drove around and we noticed that there were some other people breaking curfew. Uh -oh. There was other people breaking curfew. And, and, we, and we were coming, we were rushing from a meeting to try to get to a church that is being a, a place of sanctuary for protesters so that they can be inside because that's what y'all said y'all wanted us to do, was to be way to go inside and to disrespect the state representative Attica Scott, Shamika Parrish, who is a leader in this community, and say, and other women, other black women, and other individuals, and to say that they were actually burning down something. As attorney Lanita Baker says, it is despicable. It is despicable and you are liars. Yeah. But as I was riding around and we saw all these people in one place at a Shell gas station that is not far from here. Jefferson and First. Jefferson and First. I was looking and I said, I said, wait, we got to stop because is that the police? Is it the military? No, it was the white militia. And it was after nine o'clock and they were breaking curfew with me. So what I want to know is, is it okay for us to even be at a church? And them, they can be outside, but we can't be at a church. I thought Mayor Fisher said that he wanted the churches and the mosque and other places to open up. Why were they arrested last night? And yet, the white militia was allowed to be outside after the clock because they said, listen, Louisville residents, I want you to be clear about what they said. They said that the, the owner of the Shell gas station, the owner of the Shell gas station had the white militia on their property to protect them. So they're telling you who they with. So if you continue to go to the Shell gas station Rainers, as a Rainers, person, Rainers. a black person in this city, or any, or any person who claims to support boycott. our cause, you ain't, you boycott ain't, you got Rainers. it twisted. Boycott Bader. Boycott Bader. You boycott Bader. Immediately. immediately. We have no reason to go back to that gas station right. since they are standing with the white militia. And it's all First and Jefferson. First and Jefferson. And they yes, shot, some, yeah, right, and one of their white employees shot a black man down there the other day. And ironically, they put out video of some people in the store throwing things down. But they never showed that the reason why that even happened was because a black man was shot there and they held the man who shot him inside the store for two hours to protect him. And the question I have for the media is, where is that story? Why is it that people don't know a black man was shot at a shell station and the white militia is being allowed to stay outside there and protect I want to tell you that what has actually happened is that one, Breonna Taylor has brought us together. And we will never be separated. Mm -hmm. And number two, we are prepared to fight until our every single little Breonna Taylor on, that is watching us, hey. not for what hey. Dr. Hey. King did, hey. not for what Coretta Scott hey. King did, not for what those did in the past. They want to know what Keep this generation on, is going now. to do to stand for freedom and justice. And I'm telling you, we didn't come to play. God bless you. Hey. Hey, that, that's why we, <laughs> that, I think we're going to bring it back. Let's get Mr. Black and Daniel. She's coming. She's coming. All right. Hey, that's why we call her the queen of this movement. And, and I will tell you, it's so important that we turn this moment into a movement that we transform this pain into power yeah. that we
transform this protest into policy. Mm -hmm. So I, I do want to announce that on October 14th, which is George Floyd's birthday, mm -hmm. we want to have a national get out to vote mm -hmm. rally right. in cities all across right. America. Right. I know uh, Reverend Al and George Floyd's family are going to go lead a march <laughs> in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I pray that Bianca and Tamika and Lanita and Tamika again yeah. mm -hmm. will help lead a march yes, to vote for Brianna yeah. right. on that day yes, in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. We're asking for people all across America whose families have been afflicted by police brutality to go to the front line and help lead people to the polls because the definition of insanity is to continue to do the same thing and expect different results. And I know that no candidate is perfect, no. but you vote for the candidate who has the interest most aligned with your interest. That's right. And that's all we're going to say. All right. Now, now, right now, we're bringing a brother who came a long way to be here. And if you've seen any of his interviews, you know he come from the Tamika Mallory School. Right. <laughs> okay. he, right. he ain't going to hold back. Right. A man who also you is heartbroken. A man who talked to Tamika Palmer on the phone. They met at the March on Washington with uh, National Action Network. And he has been steadfast in his commitment for justice for Brianna while still fighting for his own son, justice for Jacob Blake Jr. Please welcome Jacob Blake Sr. Big Jake! Big Jake. First of all, we drove eight hours here for this family right here. Yes, sir. And I love each and every one of you. I love each and every one of you. For the activists in the square, that's right. That's it. We ain't going nowhere. That's right. We will not be moved. That's right. We will not be moved. That drive meant nothing to me. Hey. Because I knew I had to be here. I knew I had to stand there. We didn't choose this fraternity. Mm -hmm. This fraternity chose us. Well, mm. So if we lay down and let them run over us, mm. then who would we be? Mm. Where would we go? Mm. We couldn't look you all in the face if we didn't stand up the way we were supposed to stand up. Mm. And Daniel. It's not a photo op with Mitch McConnell hey. mm. or Donald Trump. Mm. Did you say her name? Mm. Did you say her name? No, no, Don't come bringing us that shucking and jiving hey. stuff. Mm. Hey. Hey. Face this family. Turn on the lights. That's right. Turn them on. Show the truth. Show what you did That's and right. what you did not do. That's right. We're tired of it. Enough is enough. Amen. I know what this sister goes through. You all don't under you don't understand okay. when it's your child. Mm. You can't fathom the emotions that you go through every night. Mm. You hear them talking to you. They're not there. And you hear them talking to you. I knew this family needed some energy. And I said, I'm coming. I'm coming. Because we ain't going to lay down anymore. You cannot stop the revolution. You can't stop the revolution. You cannot stop it. 
I stand here today in Louisville, Kentucky, one of my favorite cities. Hey. Oh. hey. Muhammad Ali came yeah. from here. I've made salat with Muhammad Ali so many times mm. you wouldn't believe it. Mm. I've heard so many stories about there was a chicken place with biscuits here you were talking about. <laughs> I'm here for this family. And if you think you got a sucker standing in front of you, hey, talk to him. if you yeah. think you got a sellout standing in front of you, my son gave me the power to come over hey, here today. Right. He cannot stand for himself today. Mm. So I stand for him. Mm -hmm. We stand for him. Right. We are family. Right. We are community. Right. It takes everyone to stand up and say something. That's right. You cannot get rolled over. Jacob is standing for the family. Mm -hmm. Jacob's standing for Brianna. Yeah. That's right. Did he say her name? Did Daniel Cameron mm -hmm. say her name? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he is. Well, <laughs> that's what he is. <laughs> if you have breath in your body mm -hmm. Come on now. and you are concerned about the lives of your children, mm -hmm. your grandchildren, mm -hmm. your brothers, your sisters, Come your on. mother, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, you will take yourself and register to vote. Mm, Amen. Because if we do not change these laws, they will still continue to treat us That's like it. we are animals. That's My it. son and Brianna were human beings. That's the laws, the people's minds, they have to be changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know how to speak English. Mm -hmm. We know how to articulate. Mm -hmm. You can't feel the way we feel unless you put on this suit. I don't take this suit off for nothing. I go to sleep in it, I eat in it, I walk in it, I wash in it. I can't take it off. But there's no need for you to look at us in an animalistic way. Mm. We are no less important than you white people standing in this crowd. That's right. We understand that we love our children, we love our families like you love yours. Mm. Why in 2020 am I having to tell you that we're human beings? Why? Say your name. Rihanna Taylor. Say your name. Rihanna Taylor. Say your name. Rihanna Taylor. I love y'all, Louis. Love you. Love you. Love you. Yeah. After that. Like, what is that? <laughs> Our last speaker. I do want to say one more thing to Daniel Cameron. If you, in fact, did not say Brianna Taylor's name to the grand jury, if, in fact, you did not present any charges on behalf of Brianna Taylor to the grand jury, we demand that you appoint a special prosecutor to present charges on behalf of Breonna Taylor mm. to a grand jury because it's not too late. We still demand full justice for Breonna Taylor. Hey, that's it. That's it. Hey, that's and with that representative who had to spend the night in jail, fresh out, fresh out, of, fresh fresh out, out of being released for jail, but what, allegedly burning down the library. library. Burning books. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, uh, with all due respect to House Representative Attica Scott. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I have to say to you, Ms. Palmer, uh, Auntie Janiah, that in Brianna's name, neither I or my teenage daughter who was arrested with me would try to burn down a library that our people need, that our people need. So I just want you to know those are some ridiculous charges that were levied against us. I also want the rest of y'all to know that we were de detained at 8.58. Now, 8 I don't know. What time is curfew? 9, Nine o'clock. So you do the math. We were literally across the street from the church. And when we got to the library, the police surrounded us. They said, circle them, circle them. And they would not let us either get back to our car or literally get across the street to the church. So they came prepared for war and for battle against the people they are paid to protect and serve. Wow. But I just want to say that we will pass Brianna's law for Kentucky. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Shamika, Nicole, Tyra, Kalila, Dana, Jocelyn. We've all been working with Sam Aguiar, who uh, you all have heard me say, working on police accountability for years. Uh, we work with the ACLU of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Katura Heron. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. And our law goes a, a little bit further than the local law. Not only does it end no-knock warrants across Kentucky, because black folks everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Appalachia and rural Kentucky, uh, but it also demands that when you do issue a warrant, that you must have a body warrant camera and it must be turned on, or you will be disciplined, including termination. It also mandates that we have an alcohol of shooting. So, like Tamika Mallory said, we are coming to make it very clear that your state representative better sign on to Brianna's Law for Kentucky, or in two years they're going to be gone. Uh, we are making it very clear to the Speaker of the House, David Osborne, right next door in Oldham County, that you need to make sure Brianna's Law is heard this year before we go back in session in January. So when we go back in January, we will pass Brianna's Law for Kentucky. Thank you. Step, hold on, hold on. We're going to take questions or not? Okay. All right. Step back, everybody, for a second. I, I hold for a second. Hey, Miss Tamika Palmer. Now she ain't gonna say anything. Janiah told me I better not give her this mic, but she's gonna, but she's gonna do something special. And I heard her say it so many times. So I will say it as she commemorates her sister. With her mother standing beside her. Greenway! 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 Give it up for Brianna's little sister, Janiah. Yeah. Wasn't that special? So, uh, Attorney Lanita Baker, Representative Scott, thank you for your leadership, your transformational leadership. Uh, Attorney Sam Aguilar, yeah, we'll take a few questions, and uh, then we're going to get to the business of what you said to me and making the streets hot. Okay. That's a stretch. Tell us the fact that Brianna's name is not mentioned anywhere in the indictment. I know you talked about that, but how hurtful is that? How angering is that? The fact that we, for 191 days, were proclaiming from the top of the mountaintop, say her name. The fact that Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron did not mention her name once in the indictment was like a kick in the stomach to Tamika Palmer. Daniel Cameron has shown us that he does not intend to get justice for Breonna Taylor. He has shown us that he is not willing to fight on behalf of Breonna Taylor. Therefore, he is not capable of Breonna Taylor. Neither do we feel that he has the experience to continue to present on behalf, to fight on behalf of Breonna Taylor. So he should, under his legal obligation, appoint a special prosecutor. Um, in terms of the federal investigation, the FBI went a lot, a lot more into what we heard Daniel Cameron say is was just the shooting uh, that took place on March 13th. He did not say shooting up Breonna. We know that there were no charges of Breonna Taylor. Um, but it, it is our hope that the FBI gives us justice where the where Attorney General Cameron did not. Yes, ma'am. Do you believe that this is the turning point in America? And what does change and justice look like to you? <laughs> I, I'll say this. Uh, she asked, is this the turning point in America? What does change and justice look like? It, it, you know, the fact that we saw 
the same thing happened yesterday in the grand jury announcements with Breonna Taylor, what we saw 65 years ago, that America has a long way to go until we talk about a turning point. And, you know, it, it just, when you think about it, they have been doing this since 401 years. While America is dealing with the COVID-19 mm. pandemic, we in black America have to deal with the 1619 pandemic. For 401 years, we've been dealing with systematic racism and oppression. And even if the president and the attorney general won't acknowledge it, we live it every day as black people in America. And they continue to tell us. Video existed, and what questions does that raise? I'm going to defer to my great co counsel, Sam Aguiar. Sure. So, if I understand your question correctly, you're essentially asking more of, I guess, what the public hasn't seen. Did we know it existed, and what does that do for this case? So, uh, we've been privy to the entire police file. So, part of our anger and frustration up here is that we know things that eventually we're going to be lobbying for, and we hope that all of us demand this that this police file gets released to everybody ASAP. Daniel Cameron is done, you know, and he got so much wrong. Mm -hmm. So we've seen so much piecemeal stuff come out throughout the case. But when everybody sees what really happened, this anger and frustration and, you know, curiosity that we feel right now, it, it pales in comparison to what it's going to be when everything comes out. That video right there, I think it was a home video. And... Uh, video by that least there's 50 other body camera videos that need to be released in full for everybody to see right now I, I've seen I've seen the body camera of the car when it pulls off and that's not even the full extent of the, that whole video the entire police file to be released now all of it, all of it. All of it.